There was a lot of panic in the football manager community when they announced that FM Touch wasn't going to be coming back for FM 22. But worry not, if you are a Nintendo Switch gamer, it is out for you. Football Manager 2022 Touch. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Hello and welcome to the final part of my little mini-series of first looks at the various versions of FM22 coming out across the different formats. I've already done videos having a first look at the PC version, the Xbox version, the mobile version, and now we're having a look at, at the Nintendo Switch version, the, the, the only one that still carries the name FM Touch. If you're excited to see this video or just looking forward to finding out more about FM Touch on the Switch, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video. And if you are new, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. I make daily Football Manager videos, mainly on the PC version. But, you know, if a gazillion of you watch this video and tell me you want a series on Switch, I might do one. You know, who knows? Um, so I am, uh, I am playing with my little... I don't even remember what these are called. I don't use my Switch very often. I did have a controller, like a Mario controller that I could plug into it, that I think I used last year. No idea where that's gone. Um, so I'm playing with these. I've lost the little dangly bits that you attach onto it, so I hope I'm not going to break them using it like this. But I am using some of the knowledge I've already ascertained from the Xbox version um, to do my first little bit of navigating around the game because um, if you hold the left button down, um, you can actually switch to a, uh, a little pointer. A pointer is really handy, especially because you don't have the option on this one to use keyboard and mouse. I think you can use touch control, hence it's called touch. I obviously can't do that while it's docked so that I can capture the footage, though. But if you just sat there with the switch in your hand, you can use the touch screen controls, which is probably the most easy way to control it. But um, for the purposes of this, I'll show you the two different ways you can do it using the controller. So um, option one is to have the cursor that moves around the screen like that. Option two is to have that little purple square that goes around sections. And then once you're in, within the sections, you can use the D-pad to select what you want within the section. So firstly, we're going to have a look at what's new in FM22 Touch on Switch. So new in the game, we have the Data Hub, which is one of the big headline new features for the full version on PC. We have the new Match Day AI, the increased match authenticity is in the touch version as well. Um, we've got more of an instant impact, instant feedback on um, news stuff and player interactions, um, and also some improvements to how the controller works. And having already spent a bit of time playing the Xbox version and looking at this and seeing the control system is exactly the same. I can vouch for the fact the controllers just seem a lot smoother. They're utilizing the shoulder buttons a little bit more. Um, it's a lot easier to navigate the around the game now. I think it was... Two or three years ago, they first brought FM Touch to Switch. I remember um, it was it was clunky. It's not as clunky anymore. If you haven't tried it for a few years and you're itching to play some Football Manager, and this is the only way you could play it, you could do a lot worse than checking it out, I think. It has definitely improved over the last few years. So game mode-wise, we have three options. We can do a career, we can do create a club, or we can do one of the challenges. No multiplayer on Switch, which is a little bit of a shame. It's a no option Look like there is any option for multiplayer, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, so just local one player options. The challenge mode are the same challenges. Did you say Siri is being annoying. Uh, the challenge mode is the same challenges that have been in FM Touch for years, so they're still available uh, within this version of the game if you want to do a challenge. But assuming you just want to play a normal game, you can either do it as a creator club or you can do a normal career. Um, I am going to do a career as. I think I've used Dortmund and I've used Peterborough so far. So let's let's pick. Oh, hold on. So yeah, you right, let's demonstrate how this works. When you're not using the pointer, you use the left analog stick to select a section, like I'm doing there. And then within the section, it's D-pad. It's still not as good as just touch screen would be, and you still have the option of using the pointer if you want to, but I actually think the pointer is a little bit more clunky. Um, so if we go to England and um, we're going to change England to, should we go to France? I'm not, I've not looked at Paris Saint-Germain in, uh, in this version of FM yet. So I think I probably owe it to myself to have a look at Kylian Mbappe and how he works in FM 22. I've spent enough time with Erling Haaland already. We're doing advanced setup so we can do five nations uh, from the start on the switch. Um, so again, use the, uh, use the stick to select the section and then within the section 
Um, you can select what you want to add in. So I'm, I'll just add England in just to show that it is an option you can do. And you can see how the game speed star thing changes as you add stuff as well. So if we set up our game, um, I like the fact that it's it's got the labels for what buttons you press for when you want to do stuff. So once you get used to the left stick D-pad thing, which I'm slowly but surely getting used to, having spent some time on the Xbox version as well, you can kind of get into a rhythm of moving around the screen with your left hand, left hand, using your right uh, trigger for just pressing continue, the way you'd space bar on a PC, and then just moving between the different buttons to um, quick select some of the buttons that are on screen. So I think it's it's certainly not as clunky as it has been. They have they've they've promised us controller improvements. I think they've definitely delivered controller improvements on this version of the game. Um, just give it a moment to set up. So as you can imagine, if you've watched all of these first look videos, um, you'll know that this is taking a little longer to set up than it did on the Xbox. But then what do you expect? The Xbox is a much more powerful bit of kit than the Switch. I've still got the original launch Switch, so I don't have one of these fancy pants OLED ones or anything like that. So I don't even know if they've had a, a boost and would run the game any better, but I'm on... What are they, six-year-old bit of kit now, a Switch? How long has the Switch been out compared to the Xbox uh, Series X and S that's only been out a year? It's obviously going to run a little bit quicker on those. Um, if you are looking for this kind of experience, the FM Touch kind of experience as a PC player, because obviously you don't have FM Touch within Steam anymore, and the Xbox version that I showed you on the Xbox console, you can actually get that from the Microsoft Store on PC and play FM Touch on your PC, you have to do it as it isn't called FM Touch, it's called FM Xbox Edition. You have to buy it through the Microsoft Store rather than buying it through Steam. Or if you've got Xbox Game Pass, you can download it as part of that. So if you are watching this video because you are desperate for FM Touch, you've played it for years, you really enjoy it, you want to be able to do FM Touch, there is still that option for you. You can still play an FM Touch style game on PC. So worry not, you just need to go to the Microsoft Store and then you'll have a game that looks a lot like this one, because so far, and I've not got into the meat of the game yet, but so far, this seems absolutely identical to the Xbox version. I've not noticed any change yet. Um, I'm not going to mess around too much customizing. My man, you can see that he has got um, all the different customization options that are in the full game this year, though it's all in there. Um, and there we are as the new manager of Paris Saint-Germain. And you can see me doing lots of the, lots of the controls just using that right trigger the right trigger over and over again moves you through these screens nice and quickly and it is it does stop it feeling as clunky as it has felt in the past so do we need to pick a save slot he says uh, it not being as clunky so we have to pick a save slot rather than just automatically put it in slot a good old nintendo they just like to be awkward don't they so once you are into the uh, into the main game screen similar control system to how it is on the xbox you press the left trigger to bring up your menu down the left-hand side of the screen, similar to what you get on the PC. And then the plus button brings up the actions that you can do on each screen. And you can use the shoulder buttons to move around the stuff that's at the top there. So if we want to have a look in the squad, um, you press the left trigger and then use the D-pad to move up and down on this list. We can have a look at the squad from there. Um, you can do the tutorials if you want to. Ah, I don't know where the X button is on a Nintendo. It's a different place on Xbox. It wrecks me. Um, but we can, for example, have a look at this guy, Lionel Messi. I've not managed him at all in FM22. How are we nearly three weeks into this game existing? And I've not managed Lionel Messi yet. So we've got Messi. Um, we've obviously got Mbappe in there as well. Um, so we will do a little bit of a match in a second to have a look to see how the match looks. But the data hub is in here. The data hub doesn't actually kick in until you've played three league matches. So we won't see that in this video. If you want to see the data hub in action... Watch my Arsenal B to C series that I did on the uh, on the main version of the game over the last couple of weeks. It is the same across all of the different versions of the game, as far as I know. Um, right, let's yeah. So this is it is identical to the Xbox version. So if you've watched that video or if you've played FM Touch last year, a lot of this is very 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 similar, which is no bad thing. Lots of people loved FM Touch which is why lots of people were upset when it was taken away. Um, they've brought it to they've brought it to PC, uh, brought it to Switch, sorry. Shinied it up. Um, they've added the Data Hub, which is the big headline new feature. Um, they've added the new match engine, which we're going to have a look at in a second. Um, and they've just smoothed it all out nicely. And I am all for things being 
smoothed out and streamlined. And yes, we're going to accept the vision. I have to keep looking at what buttons are where. So let's quickly stick a tactic in. You can see that we are getting into this rhythm of just setting it up relatively easily. So and um, we're going to do a vertical ticky tacker, I think, rather than just a normal ticky tacker. We're going to go a little bit more attacking. And we're going to do a, we're not going to do a 4 2 3, we're going to do a 4 3 3 wide. Um, yes, that's what we want to do. And then we can press the right stick to quick pick from there. And this is what a quick pick recommends. I don't necessarily want to play Mbappe as a pressing forward. So I can hover over him, press the X button, and then using the D pad, select what I do want him to be. I want him to be an advanced forward. Um, and then I can just go back to the previous screen and he switched over to being an advanced forward. If I want to swap the player, press the Y button and you can pick a different player from within there. So I think that um, that all works nice and straightforward. I had someone in the Xbox video saying they couldn't work out how to do transfers. So as both versions of the game seem very similar, um, let's see if we can buy a player. I assume we've got some money. Let's have a look to see how much we've got in the finances. Nice big budget. Let's quickly try and put an offer in for a player. So if we go to player search quickly, um, should we try for it? Should we try for Erling Haaland? What's the worst that can happen? So if we go to transfer, um, his transfer value is 68 million. So they've not brought the transfer value ranges into touch. They're now in the main game. We've still got the old school style uh, transfer value. Um, but we can press Y to make a transfer offer. Um, this tutorial stuff that we don't want to do. Obviously, if you knew, play through the tutorial stuff. Um, but you can use the right stick to move within the value. Um, I think you can click on it. Yeah, you can click on it and then pick a value from a drop down as well. So you've got different options to to offer. However, you might want to offer it. I think you can do installments as well on this version, which you couldn't do. I think it was the mobile version. We were trying to do installments and you couldn't do it on there, but we can do installments on here so we can add bunch of money as installments well with Paris Saint-Germain you know we can we can afford to we can afford to throw some money around how much do we actually have 40 38 million so if we stick 30 million up front and try and do let's, should we make that offer should we see what they say they've accepted the offer so we might be bringing Erling Haaland to Paris Saint-Germain as well which would be absolutely absurd um start negotiations um Get out of the tutorial and finalize promises. See, it's I am getting into this rhythm of it just all flowing quite nicely. It's all nice and straightforward, and it's not as clunky as it has been previously. I, If you watched my video playing this last year, you wouldn't have seen me moving around the screen as fluidly as I am this year. It has definitely improved on that side of things, which is a big, big plus. And I think, I mean, the fact that it's the same control system across Xbox and Switch is certainly helping with that as well. I'm a little bit more used to it. It's not it's not completely them being geniuses, but um, let's... Do we want Messi to be an inverted winger? Um, where, how do we get to Messi? There he is. Um, yeah, you know what? We're just going to we're just gonna get into the match engine. We're going to have a look. Let's see how our match plays... In the Switch version of FM Touch, we're probably going to have to tweak the settings just a smidgen so they match up with how we're used to seeing it. Um, it takes a minute, doesn't it? It, does, it seems like it's struggling a little bit with the with the console it's being played on, which e the odd little the odd little hang here and there. Um, right, let's just pause and get into the settings. We can press the minus button to get into the settings. So we want. TV view, we want the camera lower, um, but fully zoomed. So these are the settings that I always use. And then for the replay, we want behind goal. So they're the usual settings. So it should give you a, a nice, accurate representation of, of how it looks compared to what we're used to seeing in the saves that I've got here on YouTube. How do we make this go away? Uh, pause again. How do we make this go away? Um, let's try using the pointer. Will the pointer make it go away? Pointer make it go away. Because the pointer's 
Yeah, we can use a pointer. There probably was a shortcut that would have allowed me to do that, but I couldn't work out what it was. Right. Can we have a highlight, please? I want to see how the match engine looks playing on probably the um, <clears throat> the weakest bit of tech I've used for any of these videos. Um, certainly my phone, my Xbox are both a lot more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. So the fact that it's running on Switch at all is pretty impressive. And um, we're not getting much in the way of a highlight though. So uh, here we go. Um, and it's immediately trying to give us a tutorial, which we're going to ignore, get back into the game. Right, let's have a look at the boys in action in a highlight for the first time. Um, there's a Verratti charging forward on that far side. I mean, graphically, I'm watching this on a 4K monitor and it obviously looks a little bit... But it is a Switch and everything on Switch looks a bit on a 4K monitor. If you're watching this on your mobile phone, I'm looking over at the OBS monitor over there, which has got it um, showing at like, I don't know, 920p. Um, and it looks beautiful over there. Um, because it's not stretched out to bigger than it needs to be. So I think on a smaller device, like the Switch screen in handheld, for example, similar to what you get on a lot of Switch games, if you're a Switch owner, you'll know that stuff usually looks better in handheld mode, especially if you've got the sexy new OLED. Um, stuff usually looks better in handheld mode than it does blowing up on a big telly. I think that's probably going to be the way with Football Manager as well. And I just can't imagine a situation where you're buying it on Switch to sit in your living room and play it on the TV. It just... If that is what you're doing, let me know down in the comments section. I think this is very much for people to have on the go, whether or on the go or on the toilet. That should be the tagline. FM22 Touch on Switch for on the go or on the loo. They can have that if they want. That can be, I mean, that's my free gift to you, Sports Interactive. If you want to use that slogan on the poster, the way you get on movie posters, attribute it to uh, Lelujo. I'll be fully on board with that. Um, I mean, it looks nice. It runs the way you would expect football managers to run. It's got the new um, match AI in there. Um, it's got the, some of the new animation stuff in there as well. Um, it doesn't look as shiny and pretty as it would on a PC, but if that's what you were expecting, you had false expectations, but it looks absolutely fine. I think that's an offside. Has been disallowed for offside. Do we get the little offside line on the replay? We do, and he is offside. So... No complaints at all. I don't think we need to see the entire match. I think we've, I think we've probably seen enough. Like I've said in all of these videos, um, if you do want to see more of this particular version of the game, firstly, this video needs to be supported with lots of views, lots of likes, that kind of thing. But let me know down in the comments what more you would like to see. I am all for doing little tutorials or guides or demonstrations of different parts of different elements of the game. I've got every version of FM22 because it's my job. And I'm a big nerdy loser. So if there's anything you want to see in any of the different versions of the game, just let me know. And if enough people ask certain things, then I'll make videos on those things, regardless of what version of the game it is. So you know you can ask. That's what the comments are for. But I think we probably will wrap the video up there. We've got half an hour left to go in this game. Um, I'll leave it running in the background while I say goodbye so you can uh, watch the last couple of bits of the match engine in action. But if you have enjoyed the video... Please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. So important, especially when I'm throwing all of these videos out over the course of a couple of days like I am at the moment. Um, there's always a chance for videos to get lost in the shuffle when so many come out at the same time. And by leaving a like and a comment for the algorithm, it really does help to make sure videos don't get lost. Um, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on if you are new, especially because you've got non to Legends starting at 4 o'clock today. I put an intro video out for that yesterday, but 4 o'clock today, non to Legend, my main series on FM22, starts here on the channel. It'll be a channel premiere. I'll be live in the chat, so make sure you come along for that. And thank you very much for watching. We've just gone 2 nil up, so we'll just watch this, uh, watch the replay of this goal. Before I say goodbye, Messi charging down the right, and Bappe getting in the... I'll tell you what, this front three is a lot of fun, isn't it? Might have to do a PSG save at some point. Thanks for watching, folks.